Not long ago, the center of Phoenix was a desolate zone of parking lots and low-rise office buildings where workers fled home to the suburbs at five o'clock. But downtown has finally begun to pop. If your downtown isn't vibrant, your city can't be vibrant because it needs a strong heart and the blood pumping through that strong heart to get out into the veins, into the suburbs. The initial spark was the introduction of the light rail and a new downtown campus for Arizona State University. As the momentum builds, private investment is taking notice, but there are obstacles. Commercial property taxes in Phoenix are high. Dense high-rise construction is more expensive than building in the suburbs. And there is some question whether people will pay the higher rents required to offset the costs. That magic solution is a giblet, or government property lease excise tax, a homegrown Phoenix invention in which a developer temporarily hands over the title of their property to the city. And for a set period, say eight years, the city officially leases the property back to the developer. Since the property officially belongs to the city, the developer can build without having to pay any property tax. So by the city coming in as a public-private partner and providing that eight years of abatement in their property tax, it allows the rents to catch up to construction costs. It's a Rube Goldberg kind of um, bubblegum and paperclip solution. It can incentivize and create private investment to match the public investment, in this case, an investment of foregone property tax. The dilemma is, it seems to be uh, unfair. Uh, some projects get it and some don't. Handing out tax abatements to big developers and national hotel chains doesn't seem fair to smaller property owners that struggle to establish themselves on their own. Here on the edge of downtown Phoenix, Angel's Trumpet Ale House has built a loyal clientele with its stylish interior, wide selection of craft beer, and views of the downtown skyline from its outdoor patio. I mean, almost kind of despite the odds, he was one of the very early people in downtown Phoenix to kind of create these, uh, these cool destinations that people want to go to. When a big new housing development received a giblet from the city to build next door, Angel's Trumpet filed a lawsuit and not just because it would block the downtown view. You look at his property, he pays three times more in property taxes than a similarly situated business that's outside the central business district. The big question is whether the big developments would happen on their own, without the incentive. Critics point to the Stewart, a 19-story mixed-use project that insisted it couldn't be profitable without a giblet. In hopes of gaining community support, the developers proposed to preserve and incorporate an historic record store, as well as work from local artists. Despite all this, they were turned down for the giblet. Yet the project moved forward anyhow. There's been an argument that the market in downtown Phoenix doesn't support high-rise, dense residential living. Uh, we found that that's simply not true. Yet the city touts the Stewart as a success of its ability to discern which projects really need an incentive and which do not. We have a strong financial analysis that we run on every project. For every 20 or 30 giplets we're requested, staff supports one. People who dislike the big project incentive have a real point. Cities are organic, living, breathing entities that become interesting not by fiat, but by incremental growth of small, cool things and by experimentation. I think, you know, that is, that is precisely uh, what happens when people are left, <laughs> are left to their own devices and we should be making it easy on them uh, rather than harder on them. And why? why to, to, to fulfill some central planner's dream of, uh, you know, what the ideal downtown might look like. The market makes these decisions better than some bureaucrats sitting down at City Hall ever will. But development officials insist there's no time to wait for Phoenix to rise up gradually on its own. We could leave that lot vacant for the next 40 years, and it could keep paying $14,000 a year in property tax. 
when it's over, we're gonna see $800,000 in property tax with about 400 new people living in the community and spending their money in the community on the economic impact. We always look at what's in the best interest of building a great city for the ages and not a good city for the times. That's the advantage that needs to be weighed on a constant basis when we consider these tax incentives.